30 years have passed since the fatal night when the biggest technogenic catastrophe of the 20th century happened at the fourth power unit of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the consequences of which continue to affect the entire planet even today. Unlike the atom bomb dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Chernobyl explosion resembled the effect of the most powerful dirty bomb that caused radioactive contamination. Enormous emissions of deadly poisoning radioactive dust were released into the atmosphere that became most dangerous for the environment in the aftermath of the accident. A radiation cloud enveloped not only a huge mass of land on the territory of the USSR, but also spread over territories of Eastern Europe and Scandinavian countries. But Ukraine and Belarus suffered the most from the Chernobyl accident. The accident that happened on April 1986 resulted in the death of thousands of people, serious diseases, contamination of forests, water and soil, and the mutation of plants and animals. In addition to that, a 30-kilometer alienation zone that was established around Chernobyl appeared on the map of Ukraine. Access to this zone was allowed only by special permission of the government authorities. Hundreds of settlements were in fact destroyed or buried deep under tons of soil brought there with the help of heavy equipment. In the aftermath of the accident, Ukraine suffered great agricultural losses, with over 5 million hectares of fertile soil were contaminated by radioactive fallout and lost for farming purposes. Even today after the aftermath of the Chernobyl accident shows its menacing head. Just recall the fires in the Chernobyl zone in the summer of 2015 which created a huge risk of radiation spreading over great distances of land due to the burning of dry plants and roots of trees, burning of the top layer of soil containing radionucleotides that have accumulated there over recent years. As of April 26, 1986, right after the accident happened, 31 people died of radiation sickness at once. 134 people were taken to a specialized clinic for intensive care of radiation disease. Another 80 people died in a horrible death because of skin and respiratory tract and contamination and toxemia. Operations at the Chernobyl NPP were completely shut down after the accident, and a huge team of workers were needed to eliminate the aftermath of the accident. Over 600,000 people took part in this elimination process. Attention was focused on paying homage to the heroism of firemen, police units, military servicemen, doctors, and miners. Regardless of the social and political consequences of the disaster, the irresponsible approach to interpretation of facts and circumstances of the accident was never changing. Even today, there is a definitive common opinion about the cause of this accident. 30 years after the accident, we can confidently say that the Chernobyl disaster was a major national tragedy of Ukraine and was further evidence of the decay of the Soviet system, whose bureaucrats were afraid and unwilling to acknowledge the technological error of a nuclear energetics for the sake of saving the highly exaggerated authority of the USSR. The Soviet authorities showed once again its disgraceful and nonchalant attitude towards the lives of Soviet citizens. Later, different commissions set up to investigate the cause of the accident stated that it was necessary to take urgent measures to ensure evacuation of the population as soon as possible. But nobody wished to take responsibility for making the necessary decisions. Had state leaders behaved as their conscience dictated, the number of victims of this technological disaster would have been much lower. Former employees of the nuclear power plant said that further actions to ensure the safety of the population depended not only on them. They informed the authority about the possible consequences of its irresponsible approach to this serious matter, but the authority didn't take any effective measures. Streets of the town of Pripyat were watered down. Servicemen wearing protective masks against radiation contamination drove around the town in armored personal carriers with dosimeters to check radiation intensity. But nobody informed the local population of the scale of the accident. Officials thought all would somehow turn out well in the end. As we see, they were gravely mistaken. В 9 часов утра Грудинец Василий Васильевич, первый заместитель министра внутренних дел. 
First Deputy Interior Minister Vasil Durdenets called me at 9 a.m. He updated me with all the information of all the accidents, the number of murders, sexual assaults and thefts that happened over the last 24 hours, and only mentioned a fire at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. When I asked what kind of fire it was, he answered that it was nothing serious. He said firemen had already extinguished the fires at the power plant in Chernobyl. I asked if it posed any danger to the population. He said all was fine. The situation in the town of Pripyat was normal and under control. The local residents were enjoying life as usual, fishing and keeping busy with gardening at their summer cottages. It was really so, because nobody knew about the danger of the aftermath of the nuclear explosion. The authorities in Kyiv considered the Chernobyl nuclear power plant to be an object of national strategic importance that was subordinated to the Moscow authority and simply waited for directives from the Kremlin. This is what former Secretary of the Communist Party of Ukraine, Boris Kachura, said. He was in charge of the heavy industry in the Republic and the state of industrial objects. He had to visit the site of the tragedy, initiate the establishment of staff to resolve the situation, and realize the scale of danger and make a decision to evacuate the local population living in the radiation zone. But instead of taking immediate action to eliminate the aftermath of the accident, Ukraine state leaders sat back and casually waited for instructions from the powers that be in the Kremlin. We we reported to the political bureau about the dangerous situation and what measures had to be taken. Obviously, the full-scale evacuation of the local population in Pripyat was imperative. What was Moscow's response? It was Saturday. All ministers and other high officials of the party's central executive committee were out of the city relaxing at their state dashas in the Moscow countryside. Objective and reliable information about the disaster in Ukraine was not available. At the same time, as first rumors of the accident began spreading around the town, the local population started to leave their apartments without waiting for the authorities' instructions. In the afternoon of April 26, 1986, one could observe a horrific picture of the town when many women in despair and frightened by the danger of radiation leakage took their babies in arms and tried fleeing from the town as far away as possible. They were wrong to escape from the town going through the forest where the contamination level exceeded all possible norms. According to witnesses, some strange fluorescence appeared in the asphalt covering, which was constantly watered down. By the end of the day, there was a decision had been not made still by the authorities in Moscow. The truth is that we were totally unprepared to face such a situation. We simply didn't know how to deal with it. News about the Chernobyl NPP accident was not even mentioned in the evening news program Vrimya on USSR Central Television. Good evening. Today, Secretary General of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, after fierce debates, the Chamber of Representatives of the U.S. Congress. Today, armed conflicts between military groupings have broken out in Beirut. At midnight on April 26, firemen brought to Chernobyl to cope with the fire at the fourth unit of the Chernobyl NPP. The first victims hit by radiation were taken away to Moscow by two airplanes. They were taken to a specialized sex clinic that had the secret name Radiological Center. Doctors there were shocked when they saw the first victims of Chernobyl disaster fallout. Firemen were still alive, but they had already been contaminated by radiation and soon died. Only after the Moscow officials understood that something truly terrible had happened at the nuclear power plant. Only 24 hours after the disaster, head of the USSR Council of Ministers, Mikola Ruzok, called Gorbachev. Talking with him on the phone, I understood he knew everything. Later, a commission of the Politburo was established, headed by me. Gorbachev fully trusted us in such situations and did not interfere. For three days, we didn't know the real situation at Chernobyl, so we called in an emergency situation. And at last, information came to the political bureau of the Communist Party in Moscow. A fire broke out at the fourth power unit of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. What does this mean? 
Gorbachev asked, what fire accident? I said to him that a reactor exploded, and I took a decision about the evacuation of the town of Pripyat. We had to evacuate 40,000 inhabitants, but we knew the real reason why this had to be done. Why else should we evacuate people due to some simple fire accident? Evacuation was planned to start at 1400 hours. The first wave of evacuation included an evacuation of the population from a 10 kilometer zone. During the next few days, the population of other settlements of a 30 kilometer zone was also evacuated. People were not allowed to take with them large bags of belonging, children's toys, and many other things. Some people were evacuated in what they were dressed. To avoid panic, people were asked not to worry and stay calm, and were assured that they would return home in three days. While foreign mass media warned of the danger to the lives of the people, demonstrations and outdoor parties on the occasion of the May Day celebration were not canceled in Kyiv due to the accident. Officials responsible for the holding back information on the dangerous situation explained their reasons by the necessity to avoid panic among the population. A state commission established in the USSR to investigate the causes of the disaster said that operators and the management of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant should bear all responsibility for the tragedy caused by the accident. By a court ruling passed down on April 1987 in Chernobyl, the director of the power plant was convicted as one of the persons to blame for the tragedy. The court claimed he deliberately understated the data of the real level of radiation intensity and failed to drop a plan of evacuation of workers in the local population. Chief engineer of the plant, Fomin, and his deputy, Dietolov were convicted for misconduct in office. All of them were sentenced to 10 years of imprisonment. Directors of the technical staff of the 4th Power Unit at Chernobyl plant were sentenced to 3 to 5 years of imprisonment. Ukraine lost 4 point milliliter kilowatts per hour. Four units of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant were not functioning. We need to put into service the rest of the units. We can criticize the type of reactor all we want, but what shall we do next? Nobody knows if the IAEA would allow to put into service the first, second, and third power units. The little man is always to blame, but the equipment we have is perfect and operating just fine. Winter is coming, and power units should be put into service. Despite this, the authority decided that the staff of the plant was guilty. In 1991, a commission of the USSR Inspectorate of the Nuclear Safety reconsidered the issue and didn't confirm accusations against the staff of the plant. The commission drew such a conclusion. The Chernobyl disaster was caused by imperfect design of the main reactor. In 1993, the Nuclear Safety Advisory Committee published a supplementary report according to which one of the causes of the disaster were errors in design and construction of the reactor. The reactor was strange, if not sure. There was a lot of documents that were submitted. The design of the reactor was imperfect. We wrote many papers and sent test results to the senior management of the plant, warning that this reactor cannot be controlled when used at a lower power capacity. But the answer was, keep working. The USSR needed electric power. So small accidents occasionally happen at U nuclear Soviet plants. Workers of nuclear power plants call such accidents GOAT. And such GOATs happened at Leningrad, Kurtsk, Smolensk, and Chernobyl. Можно же было задуматься. 3 июля 1986 года, когда было политбюро ЦК КПСС, on July 3, 1986, the Central Committee of the Communist Party held a closed session, which was recorded. All speakers admitted that the reactor at Chernobyl was imperfect. It was not developed completely, and it had many characteristics that made it unsafe to be put into production. Рабочая запись. Все, кто выступали, говорили, отметили одну главную вещь. 
производство, в промышленность, промышленное производство, ну, проще говоря, в тираж, в серию отдали сырой недоработанный реактор, у которого очень опасные технические характеристики. But the official version about the fault of the operational staff remained unchanged. After the disaster in 1986, operation of the plant was stopped. But in October, after construction of the sarcophagus and conducting cleaning works, two power generators were once again put into service. And in December of 1987, the third energy unit was put into service. In 1995, Ukraine, the EU, the US, Canada, and Japan signed a memorandum according to which in 2000, the Chernobyl plant was fully shut down. Nowadays, works to transform the sarcophagus into an ecologically safe system are being conducted at the fourth power unit. The new sarcophagus is a steel construction, 108 meters high and 150 meters long, with a technological carcass and auxiliary structures to be placed inside of it. Construction of the structure is planned for completion in 2018.